All right, so here we've got one of our logistic models for uh, application. So this is going to take a while, so it'll probably be a couple pages of writing here. And so really the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and find the first and second derivative. So that's first, and then after that we can read and see what it's supposed to do. We'll find the first and second derivative, we'll set the second derivative equal to zero, and we'll solve, and then we'll go from there. All right. So p prime of x is equal to what? All right, well, we're not going to be able to find that because first we have to find, you know, our inside, our next inside, and then our overall. Now, when we're doing this, what do we see with that 6 plus? Well, what we can do is we can say, well, we're going to take the derivative of this plus the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of this goes to 0. And so really, we're only worrying about the derivative of this one, OK? So that makes things wee bit simpler. And so what I'm going to do is maybe let's forget about this p prime, because let's go ahead and just start in. We know we're going to have uh, inside, another inside, and then our whole thing all together. OK, so I don't know whatever we want to call it. It really doesn't matter. Maybe we can say g of x is equal to a negative 0 0.285x. Uh, f of g equals, and now it's 1 plus 38.7e to the g. And now, I don't know, now we could do p of f maybe. And that's going to be uh, 62.7. And then it's going to be f to the negative 1. Okay, because I'm just going to take that up and make it a negative 1. So it's easy to differentiate, take the derivative of. So g prime of x is equal to what? Well, it's negative 0 0.285 f prime of g is equal to uh, 38.7e to the g, and p prime of f equals negative 62.7 f to the negative 2. And so from this, my p prime of x is equal to, it's going to be a negative 0 0.285 times 38.7e to the negative 0.285x, and then that's times a negative 62.7, and then times a 1 plus 38.7, and then it's e to the negative 0.285x, uh, and that's going to be to the negative 2. So like our last time we had a logistic that we had to say, take the second uh, derivative of, I'm going to multiply those together. So a negative 0.285 times 38.7 times negative 62.7. And that equals, all right, we get p prime of x equals uh, positive 691.5496. Six, five. Now, do we need all those? Maybe, maybe not. e to the negative 0 0.285x, <clears throat> and then times 1 plus 38.7e to negative 0 0.285x to the negative 2. All right, so now we simplified it to that. And now we have to go ahead and take the second derivative. And my second derivative is basically going to be the product of those two. So I can call that g of x and that may be h of x. And when I do that, I'm going to go to the next page. And we can work on that there. And so I said my g of x was, and that number was 691.54965e to the negative 0.285x. And then my h of x was what was in the parentheses and the power, and that was 1 plus 38.7e to my 0.285x to the negative 2. Okay. Now, I can find g prime of x, no problem. That's just going straight across. That's going to be uh, 691.54965. Now, I'm going to take ln of this, so then it's going to be times negative 0 0.285, because when I take the ln of this b, basically, that two, negative 285 goes out here, and then ln of b is 1, so that I have that. And then e to negative 0 0.285x. Okay, So now I want to simplify that, because <clears throat> it's going to be easier in the long run. So I'll take my number there, times negative 0.285, and I get a negative 
197, I don't know how far I want to go out here, negative 197.0916503, and then e to the negative 0.285x. Now this one, I'm back to the logistic part where I have the inside function, the next part, and then the overall thing like that. So I'm going to call it again, maybe, I don't know, g of x is equal to negative 0.285x. f of g is equal to 1 plus 38.7 e to the g. And maybe h of f was equal to, uh, now we have f to the negative 2, OK? Now we take the derivative of each of those, and we get that. Now if we multiply all of that together, that's going to give us our h prime, OK? So h prime of x is equal to, uh, well, if we just put it all together here, negative 0.285 times 38.7 e to the minus 0 0.285x, and then times a negative 2, and then times our 1 plus 38.7e to the minus 0.285x to the negative 3. And again, like with the g, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to multiply that and that and that. So I have a negative 0.285 times 38.7 times negative 2. So I get a 22.059. And then we still have e to the negative 0.285x and 1 plus 38.7e to the minus 0.285x to the negative 3. Okay. Now I do my, you know, g prime times h plus g times h prime. And that will give me my uh, second derivative. And it's a p, so I have. Uh, p double prime x equals, now I have my first piece here, which is a negative 197.0916503, e to the minus 0 0.285x times that, which is going to put it over 1 plus 38.7, e to the minus 0 0.285x squared. Plus, now we have this one, the 691.54965e to the negative 0.285x, and then times this one, which is 22.059e to the negative 0.285x, and then times, uh, well, then this times that, but we're just going to put it in the denominator. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Um, we can go ahead and put that in parentheses if we want. And that's uh, 1 plus 38.7 e to the minus 0 0.285x cubed. OK. Now, can we simplify? Yeah, I can put those two together, and I can put those two together. So now my p double prime of x is equal to uh, negative 197.0916503 e to the minus 0 0.285x all over 1 plus 38.7 e to the minus 0 0.285x squared. And then plus, now I have my 22.059 times 691.54965. And that gives me 15254.89373. Now, when I take this times this, if I add those two together, I'll have e to the negative. Uh, 0 0.57x, and that goes all over 1 plus 38.7e to the negative 0 0.285x cubed. All right, so now I've found first 
fifth and second derivatives of this. And so now let's see what else we can do. Well, we can set and find this one. We can plug that into our calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll set that equal to zero and see what we get. So that's going to be uh, uh, lots of fun. So let's go here and type all that in. And so we had negative uh, 197.091653 e to the minus 0 0.285. Then we had x. And I'm going to pause here. And that's going to take a while to type all this in. And then I'll come back with it all typed in. All right, so I'm back. And so now we have it typed in. So now we can hit graph. And let's just hit a number, see what it gives us. And we get a 9. OK. Um, well, I don't think that's, it shouldn't be there. We need to be higher than that, aren't we supposed to be? Let's try 15. All right, so, all right, so <clears throat> 15 gives us 12.8275. All right, and so that's going to be our value. And so what we'll do is now we get x is equal to, it said, 12.8275. And if we plug in that to p, 12.8275, uh, we are going to get 37.35%. And that's going to be our inflection point. And this, if we go back to when it was, it was uh, since 1970. So plus 12 and into the next year. So that's going to be 13. So that's going to be in 1983. And 0.8275 times 12, that gives us into the 10th month. So that's going to be October of 1983 and so our percent is going to be 37.35 percent and our rate of change is going to be 4.47 percent per year increasing okay and so i think now what does it say uh, when was the percentage of households with tvs whose owners subscribed to cable increasing most rapidly well, it was in October 1983. What percentage of the household whose owner subscribed to cable and the rate of change who owned uh, subscribed at that time? Well, it was 37.35% of the subscribers and it was increasing at a rate of change of 4.47% per year. And so interpret the answers. Well, we can say that between 1970 and 2002, the percentage of households with TVs whose owners subscribed to cable TV was increasing most rapidly in October 1983 by 4.47% per year. And at that time, 37.35% of households actually subscribed. So again, a lot of words, but that's what it's asking for is to interpret. So you'd have to write all of that out. And you know, a lot of it starts off with just rewriting the problem, adding in, you know, when it was what the percent was, and what the rate of change was, okay? So let's stop there, and I'll come back for one more.